Yeah, a lot of you are not. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. So, for a moment, I'm going to go to Suma. I don't know what it is. 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 I don't know what Verena <laughs> I will move my own hour of Amal Tatu Mafdava. If I'm on Yamit to say Matatu Puntama, if I'm out of what we let to Lama, I move on. Let the Tama turn with that for some of you can move on straight to the presentation. Okay, just some quickly housekeeping rules. Uh, firstly, the session will be recorded. The presentation, recording, and the co compilation of questions and answers will be shared with you. Um, secondly, uh, for those online, if you don't mind muting yourselves whilst we present, so that the recording, there's no, um, just for sound purposes. Um, for the ladies in the room, the bathroom is down past the kitchen to the left, and you have to follow through around. In the event of a fire alarm, we will go down to the kitchen, turn left, and enter the kitchen. And please register yourselves on the sheet. For those online, please can you put your names, your colleges, and your emails on the chat box to, to register. register. Thank you. And that will mark the start to my presentation. So share. Thank you. Okay. So just confirming that everyone can see the presentation. Thumbs up. Okay. I take that as a yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so distinguished principals and teachers, thank you very much for attending today's introductory session, which marks the start of UNDP's The Bag That Builds program, educational program, embedded into the circular economy for the recovery of waste, as we like to call it, zero waste program, uh, in partnership with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment of the Government of Samoa, the British High Commission in Samoa, the Scientific Research Organization of Samoa, and the Center for Regenerative Design and Collaboration, which is a global enterprise based in Costa Rica. Very briefly, I will touch on the overarching aim of the Zero Waste Program to provide you with the background. Essentially, what we're trying to develop is value chains for low value waste streams from segregation through to recovery in country to create circular models um, that divert uh, low value waste streams from going into landfill um, for that that can be recycled and would otherwise be expensive to export for recycling due to its very low value. The project looks at glass, paper and plastic, but we're here to engage in the plastic waste pilot because plastic represents 16% of waste generation composition of households in Samoa. And the recent water biosecurity study conducted by the United Nations in collaboration with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, the National University of Samoa, and the New York University showed that microplastics were found in almost all water samples, um, that's um, mangrove, fresh, and salt water in the island of Bolo. 
And it is not an invisible problem and it's everyone's business. So inspired by this year's Global Recycling Day event organized by the Samoa Recycling and Waste Management Association, also known as SWAMA, where students from 14 schools within the Apia urban area participated in a two week competition, they collected a total of 4,144 kilos, that's over four tons of recyclable waste, mainly PET plastic bottles, which makes evident the success of the collection drive led, led by children and youth. And that's why we want to focus on this uh, population group and leverage that to test a sustainable long-term system where with your help, students are the agents and catalysts of change. So right now, apart from small scale efforts to recycle PET plastic bottles, which are the most valuable plastic uh, type, we're following a linear model at what we like to call take make waste. Uh, so we basically consume and then we throw it away. And we usually put our plastic waste into the general rubbish bag, which get, gets collected twice every week in the urban area and taken to the landfill in the best of cases, if not littered or burnt. In any case, the landfill is the best of the worst, uh, but it is reaching full capacity within the next four to five years. So we found that if we don't know what's at the end of the value chain, why would we change our habits and behavior and practices uh, if we know it's going to end up in landfill, right? So through the zero waste program, we want to educate on segregation of plastic waste uh, to collect this separately from other waste streams and allow for a circular model to be introduced in Samoa. So this means creating a value added product from plastic waste. And we found that we can actually do this in Samoa and that is making resin eight from plastic waste. So a model that would look more like that is what we want. Uh, Circular. So I'm just going to touch into to what's resonate because I find that telling you what can be made from plastic can already spark hope and motivation to do something about the plastic pollution problem. So resonate is a high value lightweight aggregate. It's indistinguishable from natural sand and it's used for construction. And not only that, it improves the structural, the thermal and the environmental properties of concrete. And it can be used for concrete blocks and pavers, precast concrete, or poured in place concrete. So the more structural the product, the less ratio of resonate mixed with cement. But the real beauty of this product is that it accepts all types of plastic. You may have noticed on some plastic products, uh, this recycling triangle symbol uh, with a number which indicates what type of plastic the product is made of. As mentioned previously, clear plastic bottles tend to be number one, PET, uh, which are the most valuable and can be exported for recycling into new plastic bottles. But all other plastic types are not that easily recyclable. So now to make things easy, since we can't expect to go from not segregating to segregating by every type of plastic, we can, what we can do instead is separate all types of plastic uh, into a separate bag uh, for the recovery of, of plastic into resonate which accepts all types of plastic and is made of 80% recycled plastic mixed with 10% ash and 10% calcium hydroxide. Don't worry, we won't be asking students to do that process. However, they are key in ensuring that the value chain and circular model is enabled because to be able to produce that product, we need to separate the plastic waste from the general waste. So, we don't want that model, we want to look at that model and you might have noticed the bag that builds in between and that's what we're here to talk to you about, the bag that builds. Which is brought to you by CRDC, this uh, global company whose mission is to rid the world from plastic. So they've got some ambition going on there. And then in collaboration with the government of Samoa, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment and the British High Commission. So there are two main components to the, to the bag that builds educational program. On the one hand side is the education and awareness on plastic pollution and plastic uh, management. And on the other side is segregation at source and centralized collection for plastic waste. And this contributes to the bigger picture of the zero waste program with the objective of diverting plastic uh, waste from landfill, littering or other forms of harmful disposal. So the where, when, what, and how of the Bag That Builds program, where it will be a combination of school and home-based activities with an additional two to three field trips envisioned, when it will start in term three 
of the current academic year and sustained over time if proven successful within six to nine months. What? It's a fun and interactive activity-based educational program combining school workshops, surveys, cleanups, intra and inter-school competitions, and much more. And activities will be tailored to the preference of each school and can be extracurricular or it can be within school hours embedded into the curriculum if those linkages can be made to the existing curriculum. Um, and, and the activities will also be tailor-made to, to the preference of the school. And how it will be delivered by an enthusiastic team of young Samoan activists uh, who are engaged as goodwill ambassadors and co-facilitators of the project. So what does this look like for terms three and four of 2021? Firstly, on terms three, we will be looking at segregating plastic waste only at the school level. That means only segregating the plastic produced at school, um, auditing that plastic, um, uh, of waste segregated and collected and having weekly journals to establish a baseline and also measure progress. If we break that down, today we're on week two of July, so this is our introduction to the schools, and towards the end of the month we will roll out a toolkit and a knowledge, attitudes and practices survey. Then if we look into August, uh, in the first two weeks we will conduct the school workshops to really tell students what are the types of plastic waste, what can be put in the bag, what cannot, and why? Why are we doing this? And then we will put that knowledge into practice towards the end of uh, August uh, through fun activities such as plastic treasure hunts or relay races, which can be uh, made tailored to the age of the groups and, and so forth. And then towards the end of September, we will have the first field trip, which will be a school community plastic cleanup and audit, really putting all that we've learned that the students will have learned into practice. Then going into term four, we would like to transition into household. And this is where we ask you to select 15 students initially from years 10 and 12, acknowledging that some colleges don't have a year 11. Um, the idea, as I said, is, is to give one plastic bag per week to one of the student nominees. So they go home, they segregate the plastic, uh, the household plastic waste from the general waste and they bring it back to school. And then there will be a weekly collections from the school of that plastic waste. Again, weekly journals and waste auditing will be provided to, to establish that baseline and measure progress and impact over time. The term four looks less heavy because we acknowledge there are exams. <laughs> um, and we will start with a midterm review survey and audit uh, to see how much have we learned from term three and what are the needs going into term four? What, what is missing? Then in weeks four and five, we will uh, enter school competition. It can be intra within the school or inter across schools. Um, and it could be from photography to essays, whatever the school would like to participate in. And then towards, I know November is exam uh, period, especially. And so towards the end of December, just have some expert led knowledge sessions uh, relating ways with health, with climate change, and other aspects. Because I find that. Um, um, we might relate to one particular aspect, but not all of them. So it's, it's good to, to understand the, the whole picture and how waste is actually present in every uh, dimension. And then from 2022 onwards, or from the start of 2022, we hope to have received the machinery for Resonate. So ideally we would do a field trip for the students to visit the facility and see what's being made with the plastic waste they're segregating and also do a simulation of the youth collab. The youth collab is basically uh, where they pitch business ideas. So we really want to get students to come up with products made out of plastic. And then uh, in a way it's a competition uh, between the different colleges uh, to see what's the most marketable product and have different categories um, to, to pitch. <clears throat> Tapping into their creativity. So this school toolkit um, is composed from three uh, main things, the visual communication resources, the auditing tools and student workbooks and journals, and the education. So the visual communications resources, each college will be receiving four A2 laminated posters, one laminated drop-off sign where the bags will be disposed of, and 35 uh, flyers that uh, students can take home to really know what goes in the bag and, and educate the household around the new practices. 
And the other thing tools and workbook journal include two portable hook weighing scales to see how much plastic goes in each bag, 180 bags for term three. So that's only for the school collected plastic waste. And then one per student from term four onwards. Uh, one plastic waste log sheet template, three student workbooks and journals, and up to two uh, cages to, to put in the, uh, the plastic bags. And this depends on what's already available in the school. I know some schools already have waste stands and that can be utilized. Um, so we're building on what's existing. And thirdly, the educational games. So there will be one age appropriate educational game provided to the school. And this can be shared across years. So what are the benefits? They are innumerable, but I've, these are only to mention a few short and long-term ones. So for children and youth, it's really putting game and gaming in front of the core problem solving and education with activity specific incentives and rewards, stimulating their interest in safeguarding someone's natural and cultural heritage. Whatever they do will impact their future essentially and enhancing problem solving, advocacy and leadership skills. And also broadening their horizons by presenting new future career prospects and paths within the circular economy, green entrepreneurship and waste recovery industries that the Zero Waste Program aims to, to develop. For schools, the short-term incentives and rewards for intra and inter competitions. It could be uh, also in the talks with the government certifying schools as environmental schools, uh, if the program is completed, for example, uh, enhance the delivery of environmental and science related curriculums and play a leading role in educating the next generation of leaders through environmentally respons environmental responsibility, ownership and advocacy in the management of waste. And for households and families, really leaving behind a healthier planet for the generations to come through convenience and no cost solution to plastic waste, play a leading role in advocacy by showcasing some waste uh, management practices to, the, to their community and families, and enhancing resilience by mitigating and slowing down the adverse effects of climate change already threatening uh, communities, particularly in the context of vulnerable islands. And if proven successful in the long term, there is potential for income generation within these industries, um, which might uh, interest the families. So what's next? I'm really breaking it down to step-by-step -step agenda. So for this month, uh, by week three, that's next week, uh, by Monday next week, I commit that you will receive this presentation, the YouTube recording of this presentation and compilation of the questions and answers for further dissemination to parents of the participating uh, students. In week four, there will be coordination with the youth network. So those, those are the Goodwill Ambassadors and co-facilitators I have mentioned previously. And this will be introduced to the participating schools. And in weeks four to five, we will roll out the, the toolkit for school and we will conduct the knowledge as you practices survey, survey and being consultations with the school to really tailor the program to the needs and preferences of each college. We will continue to communicate uh, with the colleges on a regular event by event basis. You will be informed of everything on the way. And for further clarification, my colleague Lameko is the project coordinator uh, for Zero Waste, so he will be available to answer any queries. And now I open the floor uh, to any questions. Um, I would also ask those joining online to please raise your hands. Uh, you can use that, the Zoom uh, button. So yep, the floor is open and thank you very much for listening in uh, and attending to this today's session. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. The two Q and A's for making as informal as possible. To the facility that we have to do in the future, part of our data. We have to do it. 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 Thank you very much for the opportunity, especially for this. Innovation. I think it's uh, very important that we hammer in the awareness to everybody. And I think using <coughs> it's a uh, better future. Uh, the only thing, I mean, 
one of the questions that uh, that came to mind was how do we incorporate this with the exams coming up uh, in the schools and also the MESC exams. Um, I, I haven't, I didn't quite get all the dates that were up there, but it would be something to consider. Uh, but uh, anything is possible and everything is possible if we want it to happen. So, this, this is the time, oh, but it is tentative. It's, it will be tailored to the exam uh, schedules, for example. So the, the survey that we hope to conduct on week four and five of this month will really capture uh, those things that need to be in place to time it right for each school and to design the program uh, to cater your needs and preferences. So we will be very flexible because we understand school uh, children have you have the exams. Uh, so so this is only tentative. Nothing is set in stone. Uh, we are open also to other ideas. Um, also, our, our youth network uh, have very good ideas, but we will conduct this uh, to the convenience of the colleges. So, well, the ideas will come because you know, yes, uh, it's a good start. So, um, yeah, the ideas will come as we know. exactly. So, so the, that's also the design and the nature of the project that we will develop it as we as we go along. Uh, Yeah, yep, yep. can hear you. Okay, um, if I may ask a question, I think my concern is similar to uh, Ms. DeVos. Um, you know, um, I mean, it's, thank you for the presentation, by the way. Um, great initiative, all for it. Um, just asking for flexibility to be able to, um, you know, uh, make allowance for students when it comes to certain things like presentations. We've got the um, athletics coming up and some of these um, students are also involved in that with training and all of that. Um, there's still ongoing um, uh, IA internal assessment for year 12 students who are involved. And I think um, I'm just basically asking for flexibility um, to be able to allow them um, to participate and without interference um, in getting their work done and getting stuff in on time. Yes, thank you very much for that. Um, we will certainly align it with, with the timings of the schools. We will have that flexibility. It's, it's, uh, these are only tentative timelines. Um, and, and yeah, we, we hear you and, and we will definitely take that on board. In fact, reflected on the survey at the beginning when the toolkit is rolled out, to make sure that going forward, we understand uh, the needs of each school. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, if I may add on to the discussion, I think what would help our team at our end is for each school to provide your timeframes of activities and so, so that we're able to cater for your needs. Um, that would help the team, especially when working with the facilitators to ensure that, um, that this certain time of the month, certain date. Yeah, this is when Samuel College will have the activity one, and at this particular time, yeah, Robert Lewis will have activity one. Meaning, it won't all happen at once, but your assistance in ensuring that we don't um, distract into the school hours is very much appreciated. And also note that the the team um, it's activity based. They're not geared to utilize the school hours. It's simply having the kids participate from home and just segregating the, the, the rubbish. The only thing that they'll ask to come into the schools is when they have an awareness program, which is hence again, if you enlighten us on which particular days that there's nothing going on, all our A's are in. As a learning for the colleges, we're happy to accommodate in that, in that area, just to help out the discussion. And it's up to the college to make it extracurricular or embed it in a science class, for example, if it aligns with any of the topics. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really open to the schools to to tell us what fits best. That's the good thing about it. It's flexible. Yeah. Uh, if you can make it flexible, then you know 
it would be good for the kids, good for us. Yes, sure. Are there any other questions or concerns? As we are co-designing co this together, this is very much in its incubation phase. We're rolling it out, but the, the flexible nature of the program means that we will learn as we go as well. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, well, thank you for the informative and comprehensive presentation. Um, I'm very concerned about the, uh, the program uh, in the sense that if we allow students to get waste from home and how are we going to, you know, because in the school, well, we're trying to put everything in place. So I, are you getting us a large a waste bin for, for this, for this uh, you know, uh, program so that, you know, we can, we, we can collect, students can collect waste and then segregate as you have mentioned? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. Um, Yes, so, so on the survey um, that we hope to roll out with the toolkit, we will assess the needs of each school in, in terms of infrastructure. What is there available? If there is a stand that we are able to use, that's fine. But if there isn't, we are able to cater up to two cages per school if needed. And then the collection system will be in place so that this is collected on a weekly basis as well. So it doesn't burden the school. So we're trying to, to, to engage students in the whole segregation and collection process to enable a circular system at the end uh, for Samoa and avoid it going to landfill essentially. So we will cater to the needs of the school infrastructurally speaking as well uh, as time and other, other concerns that have been raised. Um, yeah. Sorry, Jane, we have to unmute. That's right, Jane. No, I am. Unmute the phone. That's a question. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you're hearing me now? Yes. OK. Yeah, just, just a question, please. Um, say in the course of the event, um, of the program, um, a student wants to withdraw um for personal reasons um would that be a problem no. uh, there will not be, <laughs> that will not be a problem at all they can withdraw at any time and the school can open that possibility for another student. to another student okay yeah yes thank you thank you this was raised in, uh, from in the earlier session with the primary school principals and uh, they asked also to increase the numbers of schools, so you're more than welcome to increase your number of participants, or your number, of, number of participants, if you feel like it. So, preferably no. Yeah, we're, we're targeting years 10 and 12. The, the logic behind that is that if we go into 2022, they're still at yeah. college, but they can also pass down the knowledge. So it will be, uh, that's the sustainability of how we see the sustainability of the, of the program in, in terms of the education. Um, we, we're also, all this toolkit is made available to the school, not just to the 15 children that you nominated. So the posters, for example, if you, if you hang them on the corridor, everyone will benefit as opposed to maybe in one classroom. It's just an idea. Um, it's just when it comes to taking the bags to the households for the training that we want to limit it to 15 students just for the, the purpose of the trial. But when um, the youth networks come in for the, the workshops and, and the activities, the whole year is invited to that, just to, to make that clarification. Because we don't want to marginalize others from wanting to engage. It's just the, the, the bags for the time being. And the numbers of students be minimized from 15? It can be less than 15 to accommodate with each school. 
Jeg tror, at jeg fik dig lige over der, og jeg se på kalder mig til at færre, ikke? From a bird's eye view for the operation, everything will be funded by, in terms of cages, the two kids, uh, the bags will be funded by UN. So what we're asking for is your time, your time slots for throughout the year for six to nine months. In a more logical, uh, chronological way that we can achieve the, the, the end results. But everything will be provided for. Further questions? Sure. Um, just firstly, thank you so much for that very um, informative presentation. Um, I think from our school, we shouldn't have a problem with having to merge your program with how we are, um, especially when we are collecting plastics on a daily basis as a normal thing for the girls to actually engage in. Um, my only question is, are, would you allow us to use your activity as part of our own assistant so that we're able to, because you, all, you already have your own, your own rewards for the students themselves in terms of your two kids and after they do the auditing and all this. But um, would you allow us to also utilize this, um, because it's really interesting to see how you already have set your program um, and it really, um, uh, say because we have science fair coming up this term and we have what we call progressive reporting this term where we um, assist the students proficiency instead of their academic um, side so this is a really good activity and it really like I've said earlier it really goes together with our curriculum for this term uh, for the 10 weeks that we have for term three so basically um, my question is to um, see whether you have the authorization to allow us to utilize the activity as part of your own assessment so that we can award them with the effort that they're putting into the selected students. Yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> I, think I think that's actually courage and that's what makes this program sustainable. Rewards, rewards, like physical rewards cannot be sustained over time, but it can spark an interest. But we, we also rely on the, the schools to be able to, to motivate. And if that's something that is part of the assessment, and I particularly like the fact that it's not on the non-academic because not, not all students are academics. So, so it's something to reward them for, for good practices and, and advocate for. They might find interest in that and decide that their career path is also on that as well. So, so definitely um, the, the more alignment we can do with your curriculums, and this is speaking from our perspective where I'm not familiar at all with your curriculum. So the more we can align it, and the more we can uh, integrate it to, to your programs, the better for the sustainability of the program. Because it's definitely not part of the government's curriculum as um, we have the managed waste management, and as, as I think is the whole yeah. point of this. But we can still merge it into our own um, junior curriculums where we have the junior students engaged in these type of activities. And that definitely would be sustainable because these junior students will still be in school by 2022. So they will be still carrying on this um, and that will be um, targeting your um, sustainability uh, and it won't be an issue if we target those younger students. And, and we would also support the transition say when, when the program per se finishes but the system is, needs to remain. That's, that's our aim, that the system remains and how we can like get those older students that we would have trained throughout the pilot to be the trainers of trainers. And then yes. that's passed down. That's, that's the idea. So that's why we're starting with those years as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any further questions? The whole idea is for educational purposes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah and filter down to behavioral change, solving the problems we have with waste management. And I mean, most households in Samoa have children at school. So it's, it's also a way of channeling behavior change through the schools put into the households. And so that's what we're trying to, to test. Uh, in, in parallel with term four activities, we will also roll it out to the communities, working with youth and church groups or youth church and churches to also centralize the location. So we're trying, trying different systems to inform the government on adopting uh, new segregation practices, who by the way, excuse themselves for not being able to make it, but we, 
we work very closely with uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, and this is part of, of their mandate as well. <laughs> Any further questions? Um, no questions, just the final comments from my end. Um, sure. Thank you. It's a six to nine months program. So I think in the initial stages, um, we're ready, but um, we can consult over time with the solutions and recommendations should challenges and um, other unforeseen circumstances um, hit our way. Other than that, I think um, with the initial, with the first month program, I think um, we're able to adjust um, to that and then we'll see how we go from there. I like the idea of it being incorporated into extracurricular activity um, because that's where I see it going um, in my school program. But thank you again. Thank you thank very you. much. Hello. Thank you very much. And, and with that, I also want to bring your attention to the midterm review survey and audit. That is another opportunity for us to come back together, assess what was, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and then we move forward from there. So we will have this gatherings uh, and this network being created to, to facilitate progress as well. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank, Thank you. you. Huh? So, <laughs> 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 We're going to take a photo, so let's put everyone on the well, screen. Well, we'll do that last thing. We'll Go through the questions again because I don't think there's many that many questions left or there's not. Any any further questions? Thank you so much for the opportunity for coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. So we're now in getting our students to present their work. Thank you. 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 After this, then we'll be in constant uh, just asking you guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, no, 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 Pinahalo <laughs> Yeah, I'll never follow